Alrighty, what is up everybody? Um, we're filming this on April 2nd, meaning uh, March is over, it's in the past. Um, and again, like always, we're gonna go over it. Um, different kind of month, you know, uh, as you can see, and as I talked about it on Twitter, I uh, really could have just taken off <laughs> the second half of the month. Um, and we'll talk about this, you know, I'll, I'll just get, I'll talk about when I get there, when we get to this week. Um, cause the first two weeks were great. The first two weeks was like, you know, all of January and February had been, um, super, super good, super, super volatile, a lot of opportunities. Um, and then it just died, you know, I wouldn't say completely died, but it changed and a lot of people struggled, including myself. Um, and so we'll, we'll go into that once we get there. Um, but yeah, still a great, great month. Um, on, on Twitter, I posted around a I mean, 150, but I actually redid my or went over all my trades before I was gonna make this video and I realized I miscalculated one of them. Um, so we're actually at 153, you know, 2K difference, not a drastic change at all, but um, certainly I like to be accurate. So it actually ended up being 150 or 153, not 150. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's get right into it. So first week, um, we're still continuing the madness from January and April. Uh, you know, a lot of plays, I don't really, really remember. They were just, again, we had so many opportunities. Um, so many plays where you could just really pull out big gains and they were just like average trades because they were so good and so volatile and so much volume. Um, but the key, three of the key trades I remember, um, I think were towards the end of the week, which, which is what made uh, the fifth the best day of the week. Um, first one was HLLPF, uh, multi-day runner. Of course, I'm looking for the backside. I'm looking for the first red day as a short seller. Um, and this first red day was it. So if we go to the intraday here, almost gonna miss it. Yeah, here we go. Um, this first red day. This first red day actually went much lower than I expected. Um, I had a feeling it was gonna go back to a dollar maybe over two days or three days. We ended up doing it in about an hour. <laughs> so um, much bigger sell off than I anticipated much more quickly. Uh, I think of my trades here, yep. So pretty much right out the open, I was getting short. Um, the reason for that is, you know, if we go back to the daily here, um, every single day it had, you know, ignore, ignore this little green tick. This isn't a real green day. Um, but every single day it, it had gone pretty much green right out the open. It never touched red. Um, so the first time it goes red, it's like, that's the trigger for me. That's the, the you need to get short right now, Kyle. Um, so like I mentioned, you know, in my trades here, right out the open, it went red. Um, didn't actually get filled much on this red candle. Ended up getting filled most by size here. Um, I didn't even get full size. I remember thinking about adding here, but I actually thought this might have gone back green, so I held off. Turns out that was like, like my last chance to actually get full size. I didn't do it, so um, no big deal. I was probably 80% of my size I wanted anyway. So, you know, again, not not detrimental, not a big difference. Um, covered about, I think, a half into this pull, into the 120s, and then covered the rest down here in the 110s, thinking like, wow, what a great first red day. Like, I can't really expect for much more. And then we test one. Uh, so, you know, again, not a big deal. Like only missed 10 cents of downside. Uh, ended up having a big bounce. Normally I would short this bounce, but I kind of wanted a little bit higher. Um, and on particular days where it sells off so hard, like like I said, I, th I thought I was going to go to a dollar over like a day or two or two or three days. The fact that we did it all in one morning makes me think that like the, the easiest and the best selling time already happened. Right, if it only pulled back to like 120 for the day and then bounced to 140, like I would reshort thinking that the next day we're gonna go to one. Um, but the fact that we did it all in one day, kind of my whole range and goal of where I thought it was gonna go already happened. So didn't reshort here, thought the play was over. Um, and then, you know, what do you know the next day we actually, you know, bounce. So my thinking on that was correct. Um, so I made about six grand on that trade, which is great. Um, solid, nice single, not single, but a uh, nice trade for a short. The other two trades for the week that were really good, remember, were OZSC and ENZC. Um, so I guess quick little, uh, I guess, pitch for you guys. If, um, if you guys do have stock to trade and you do want to add on a chat room, Jack and I have started our own chat room called Breakouts and Breakdowns. Um, it's a little add-on. So if you have stock to trade, you're more than welcome to sign up and, and see us trade live. We give, you know, one webinar each per month, um, which are archived. You can watch the past webinars we've done. But um a lot of people in that room ask me about first green days. Like, Kyle, do you like this stock with the first green day? You like that stock with the first green day? Are you going to enter? You know, what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you thinking about this particular trade on these, you know, 
overwhelmingly first Green Day patterns that have been happening a lot. And what people don't really understand is that it's not a strong pattern of mine. Um, Jack loves first Green Days. Like, he's the guy to ask about them. Me personally, probably 99.9% .9 of first Green Days, I don't trade um, solely because it's just not my personality. It's not, I'm not a strong, long trader to begin with. Um, it's never been a pattern that I've made a, most of my profits from. So it's just never been a strong suit. However, however, you know, I've said 99.9%, .9%, the 0.1% of trades, of uh, first green days that I trade, sometimes I do trade them. Sometimes I think they're so ideal that I can't possibly miss them, right? I just think they're so good that I'm going to take advantage. OZSC and ENZC were this particular case where these were probably my two best first green day trades and probably will ever be. <laughs> Only because I think I know these trades or these stocks so well. Um, particularly because they had a first, they had such great examples in the past. So, um, you know, if you saw my January and February recap, like these trade, these both these stocks had massive, awesome runs. Um, but I missed these first green days, right? Here, this green day, which caused a huge gap up. ENZC, the same thing here. This green day, that actually huge, a massive gap up and run. Um, I think it was almost 100. percent Yeah, like from 40 to 50 percent, 40 to 60. And so the next thing I see is these first green days, this one and this one. Um, and so I remember these. Like I remember watching these green days happen and seeing how impressive they were. Um, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to go in my comfort zone a little bit, right? I'm going to trade something I don't normally trade, but I, I know the stock so well. Um, I know the price action from these stocks so well. And so I decided to to take them long. Um, the greatest part about this these trades were that I got in pretty early. Um, one, I think one of the reasons why I struggle with first green days is because I have a hard time telling when they're actually going to happen. And once they happen, I feel like it's too late. Um, this time I actually was like dead on, um, partly because the entire sector, like had, if you, if you know, if you go back to the daily charts, um, all these were selling off hard, right? We had large multiple days of sell off um, on not just these two tickers, but a bunch of tickers. Um, and right out the open, a bunch of them were going green. ENZC and OZSC, however, were still panicking red, but they were panicking very lightly red. I mean, look at how little of a panic this is in, in retrospect, right? I mean, when you zoom out, it's such a small sell-off compared to the previous panics from the previous days that once I saw how little these, panic, these, were, these were panicking and how strong other tickers in the sector were going, um, I immediately thought if there's a, you know, if the odds have this thing going green, you know, this is probably it. Um, and so I think I have my trades as well here. Let's get rid of HLPF, um, ENZC. So yeah, so exactly. Once once we finished out panicking, had a little little bounce, held view up here, and then started spiking over this bounce with again with all the other, other stocks green, or at least former ODC runners green, ENZC being part of that group. Um, you know, we get a lot of this volume coming in. I start buying. I'm like, okay, let's let's give this a chance. Let's risk. Um, this last high or low here, um, and see how it goes. We we spike right big green. I sell a little bit. Um, don't re-add because again, if I was a more maybe experienced first green day buyer, like I would have probably added here. Um, but for me, it's like I just this is this is again slightly new territory. Um, you know, I'm only again I'm only trading this because I know that I feel like I know this stock so well. Um, so didn't add. So a little more here. And then once we go and I go, I would say this like this is a little mini kind of parabolic spike. I just sold out. You know, there's I, I can't ask for much better of a trade for something I don't normally trade. Um, so I locked in like like I think seven k on that one, which is really really cool to 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 make that much on a again a setup that I don't normally trade or or am normally normally profitable with. Um, same thing with OZSC. I did the same idea here where it panicked. Um, didn't really even set a higher higher low. It just kind of went sideways for a while. And then once we again got this volume coming in is when I really finished up adding the most of my position towards the end here. Um, again, same thinking, added or sold into the, the spike green, didn't add on the higher low, um, sold a little more. And then again, once we kind of really got that overdone spike going, um, just sold the rest. Um, held on to a little bit, but I kind of shook myself out. I, again, I don't you know, after the easiest money is made, I don't necessarily know what's going to happen next, which is again, why, like I said earlier, you know, once a green day kind of happens, I don't know. I feel like I've missed it. Um, so here, once we got this spike and I still had some shares left, I thought like, I don't think it's going higher. Like, I don't really know where this is going necessarily. Uh, turns out I was dead wrong, <laughs> you know, goes almost way higher, probably like one of the best green days this stock has ever had um, in the history of his run up being up, you know, 70%. 
uh, by the end of the day. So that was super impressive. You know, totally underestimated that. But uh, again, not a big deal when I lock in. I think I need six like six k on this trade. Um, so again, great great win. Um, so again, that was week one. That was most of you know. Again, all these little days were just singles here and there. Nothing important. The big day was was you know probably the key lessons there. And again, you know, just it continued what I was doing in the previous months, right? 67,000 is an incredible, incredible week for me. Um, so super, super happy with that. Um, coming into next week, uh, the best trades were, what was it? Let's get rid of these. Let's see, GME and AMC. Um, and this was a big contributor to this day, which is my best day of the actual, the actual month. Um, and it's a pretty good lesson here for, on both these. Um, so let's go to intraday. Um, so if you guys remember in January, February, of course, we had like these massive, massive runs from the meme stocks and Wall Street bets. Um, you know, you give it a month or two later and they're back. Uh, this is what we'd probably call a number six dead cat bounce. Like after the huge run, there's always kind of a um, a second attempt, you can call it, at, you know, kind of trying to build that hype up again. Um and so on this day, right, on March 10th, right, it was the same day here. Yeah. Um, I actually started the morning off really poorly. Uh, if we go into the intraday charts here, um, I knew they were overextended, right? I knew it was a number six in the penny stocking framework kind of playbook, um, which is a short bias play. Uh, so out the open, I was pretty bearish on both of these. Uh, and I kind of got screwed for for thinking that way you know i eventually ended up being right as l later in the day proved me correct um but in the morning i was just early it was very early um it did not pay out well for me and i think i made it even worse by revenge trading um i believe i will pull my charts here um especially on gme gme was the worst uh that's a dip i will go over that after gme here um so as you can see i'm, I'm already starting in pre-market which some cases i i allow it but in this particular case, like there's just really no reason I should have. Um, and as you can see here, I just start kind of like shorting again, buying some, shorting some, covering some, um, trying to do it again up here and just losing more. Like it just, there was no reason for really me to be sure any of this, um, you know, a patient and good, timely short seller. Like, you know, I've said this before in previous videos, I'd rather be late and right than early and wrong. Um, and here I was just early and wrong, right? There's no need, there was no need for me to short any of these. I think I was down like six grand on this trade, you know, way, way too much for me to be short in the front side. You know, clearly this is an uptrend. Like there's just, you know, again, when you pull out, when you zoom out, you know, on a, before this crash, like it just, it's an uptrend. You know, there's, there was no reason for me to get short. I was just revenge trading at that point. Um, same thing with AMC. Let's see here. Um, yeah, same thing here, right? Got short pre-market, didn't really need to. Um, luckily, I did cover some into weakness here, which is good. Um, it would definitely reduce my losses. Uh, the problem is once we actually started spiking, I then added right back, uh, quickly realized that was wrong, cut that loss there, and then got kind of frustrated that I even did this in the beginning with. Um, so I started shorting more. Ironically, I then covered the top on this, like right before this little squeeze, uh, ended up being the top for the day. Uh, I didn't reshort because I knew I revenge trade at this point. Like I just got to chill back. I got to relax, reset. Um, cause again, if you've revenge trade before, I'll, you know, that it really just leads to more losses. Um, I think I was down like 4k in the morning, but again, after revenge trading here on AMC, after revenge trading here on GME, I ended up being down like 8k in the morning, um, which would have been probably my worst morning in quite some time, uh, considering how well this streak had been going, you know, almost, let me go back to February here, you know, two or three weeks now, or for almost four weeks of just green, all green days. Um, so this was looking like the first red day in a while, um, and, a, and a pretty much pretty uh, upsetting red day considering I doubled it, you know, just from range trading. Um, but then as we go into the into the morning with G or to the midday, I should say, not morning. Um, I don't know what happened. I still don't know what happened. Um, but someone with a lot of shares said, "Screw this," <laughs> and just just dumped. I mean, they just let it all go. Um, and once this happens, like everyone lets it all go, right? You just, you just, all you need is a little bit of the sellers, a little more, and all of a sudden it's a, just a, a tumbling, you know, a tumbling effect. Like everyone starts selling, everyone starts out, panic sets in and, and it's done. Um, so because it happened so, so quick and so unexpectedly, um, I didn't show any of this, right? I just totally missed it. Um, did not see it coming. 
the good part is with AMC is that AMC follows GME a few seconds delayed. So once I realized what was happening with GME, I immediately went over to AMC, started shorting um, into this bounce here. Um, it panicked, red, covered here, bounced again, shorted some more, covered again, and immediately just like that, I wiped out all these losses and then made 9K on top of that. So um, huge, huge turnaround. Um, I'm very glad, even though, yes, I traded poorly in the morning. Um, I didn't leave my computers. I stayed in the game. I stayed focused. Um, taking this trade, I wasn't worried about taking more losses and adding on top of this. That would have been a mistake. You know, I think it's very, I do this all the time. And I think it's very easy for all the traders to do it too, is, you know, if you're, if you're on a, maybe a losing streak, if you're having a bad morning, you're, you, you let that affect your next trade, right? You think, oh my gosh, I've already lost this much. Do I really want to lose this much more? And that's thinking in PL, right? You don't want to think in PL. You want to think in terms of your trade plan, your trade opportunity. Is it worth it? You know, ignoring the PL, trading well, trading your system. Um, and that's exactly what I did. You know, the moment I entered this trade, I knew what was in front of me, did not even think about this morning at all, which is the best way to think about it. Like just totally clean slate restart refresh immediately um and it paid out right i immediately wiped all those losses and then a nice a nice gain at the end of it um same thing with gme i think i have gme here where is it gme no uh it's this one gme um so again i missed the short on gme however i dipped on it um and the reason why i and again most of my penny dip buys i mean 99 99 percent of my dip buys Penny dip buys are in OTC stocks. But so why would I look to buy a, a NASDAQ stock? Well, it's because NASDAQ stocks, the inefficiency of panics, I think, happen much less. And they do happen. They happen plenty of times. But more so, OTC stocks can be a little more severe, which is why I like taking those type of panics. And I think that severe, severity, if that's a word, um, happens less to a degree in listed. Um, however, GME, like if we go back to the daily chart on GME, um, this same exact panic happened, I believe on one of these days, I think it was on this day on, on January 28th. Um, it had the same exact, just massively overdone panic. Um, and it had a huge bounce and I played that bounce as well. So coming into the next, this day where it had a, again, a huge, huge panic, um, I knew the same pattern was replaying itself, right? History was repeating itself and I was going to take advantage. So and, and what what opens the door to this like severity of panic, like what opens a panic so extreme is is multiple halt downs, right? We halted down here, we halted down here, um, we halted down I think two more times now down right of the day, and so before you know it, you know in in thirty minutes to an hour time frame, we've gone from you know three fifty down to like one eighty, you know that's a massive sell off, you know huge, and it's opening the door for a huge opportunity, uh, and so if we go probably get a bigger chart here if we go on the intraday level. Um, on the last halt down, right, once we get into like the 180 range below 200, I knew, you know, this stock, this stock, no stock. I mean, again, not shouldn't say no stock, any stock with no news that's just selling off like this after it halts down like four or five times, you know, you got to start asking yourself how many times are we going to halt down? You know, like, are we really going to halt down 10 times and go to like, you know, below a hundred bucks? Probably not. Um, so once we started halting down, you know, this last halt down, um, we opened up, I mean, we halted down at 215 and we reopened at 180. I mean, that's a, you know, if you couldn't, if you could pick a, a the pinnacle point of fear and panic, I mean, that, that gap down from this halt is, is huge. Um, and, and it makes sense because once it did that, I mean, it immediately spiked right back up and actually halted up. Um, once it halted up, I realized I missed it. I was like, crap, like I'm going to miss this bounce. Like I did, I was not quick enough. Um, however, I did, was pretty convicted again from seeing the last bounce on, in January that when it bounces, it bounces pretty hard. Um, it bounces usually back green, at least for a short period of time. Um, and so I knew if I could at least get an average below like 210, if I could still somehow get some shares off, you know, between 210 and 200, um, I could still, you know, catch a sizable up move to like 240, 250. Um, so I had some orders sitting right out the open. Um, I didn't wait for the reopen. I just had my order sitting there to, in hopes to, to get filled. Um, and actually, I kind of lucked out huge. Um, it actually gapped down, uh, which is very unique. I haven't seen that happen. Um, really, it's kind of just a little bit inefficiency. Um, so when it did that, I mean, I filled almost all of it at the dead bottom here, like 188. Um, clearly, there was a large seller who hadn't got out of the whole, whole, whole position. So hence why it gapped down. 
uh, but he got filled right away, and, and you know, and I helped him fill. Um, just look down there. Uh, and so immediately right after he got taken, I mean, it halted up. Uh, I was full size. I had like 600 shares. Um, halted, halted up, reopened even higher. I believe it halted up again around yeah here. By this time, I was all out. Like what? Well, by the time it was spiking huge um, into red green at 250 area, I sold it all. Uh, I think I have it here. Yeah, I mean, once we go back to red green, I'm pretty much it hit my goals. I couldn't have asked for a, a quicker, easier trade. Um, I think I think it's my biggest trade, long trade to date. I think I made like 34,000. Um, and again, not quick of a time period. Like I just couldn't ask for anything better. Uh, so that just again, from such a shitty morning such a great ending um could have been happier ended up pulling in like 60k in the day um i think i believe i reshorted gme on the bounce yeah correct i shorted into this bounce covered there then shorted into these bounces near view up covered in this flush for i believe another 10k to wipe out um again all these losses from the morning um so again just great turnaround like i said great way to just great example of you know, not letting your previous poorly traded trades affect you on the next one, like clean slate, new, new trades, new reg, new risk, um, not letting previous trades affect you. Uh, I think that's the best way to go about it. And it's, this is certainly a great case. Um, and it ended up, you know, resulting in my best day of the month. So, um, after that, going into the last day of this particular week, um, was kind of a foreshadowing of what was to come, which is the market shifting massively which was MAXD. Um, MAXD was a former runner, right? A huge run from sub penny levels all the way up to two cents. Um, bounced a little bit and now it was breaking out over this bounce high again on the, the 10th as well. Um, so I wanted to take it overnight. You know, if you look at the chart, every time it has a huge strong green day, it usually leads to a gap up and at least a morning spike. Um, we're doing that right here. So I thought, yes, I want to take it overnight. Um, so this is the intraday here. Took it overnight right into the close here. And come out the open the next day, uh, we gap down. So again, it's not the end of the world, right? It's not, um, it happens, right? You're, you're taking a risk. Every trade you're taking, there's a risk involved, which is why you have a trade bonus, right? I have a risk management system. Um, it's how you protect yourself. And so I was, per I was always prepared for this to happen. But again, the market we've been seeing in January and February, um, in the first, you know, two weeks of March, um, gap downs were like, such a rare thing, right? The market was so hot. Um, you almost could buy any stock and it was going to gap up. That's how euphoric of a, of a, of a market we were in. Um, so to see it gap down like this, especially on such a high convicting, you know, previous daily chart, like if I had to count, you know, a sample size of how many times this had a strong green day and then gapped up the next day, like I felt pretty good about it. Um, so the fact that we gapped down the next day, I was kind of a little bit taken back. I was like, whoa, this is different. You know, that's like kind of the first, the first um, hint at that the market is changing, right? And so I, I just sold for like a 3K loss um, around the open. I wasn't going to even try to play games. I wasn't going to try to hold and hope for this bounce. You know, I didn't know this was going to happen. Even if it did, I we, it would be kind of going against my rules, letting it panic even further against me right here. Um, so I just sold. Uh, so again, kind of a foreshadowing of what was to come. Of course, this is in hindsight, so I didn't know what was going to come. But again, there's, there's, the market gives you hints. Like the market can tell you little things if you pay attention. And looking back, this was one of them, right? The fact that we, such a, such a strong chart gap down the next day. Um, that was a tell sign right there. So going into then the next week, um, another tell sign was that on March 15th, I didn't even trade. I think again, the last time I didn't take a trade was in months. So clearly I took a trade every single day, January and February. I'm pretty sure I took a trade every single day in December. Um, so that so to be there, you know, watching the market and not trading anything, um, not because I, I not because I was like disciplining myself, but because I quite literally didn't find an opportunity that I thought was worth it. Um, again, another another sign. Um, however, going into the close on the 15th, I decided to short LKNCY. Now, why did I do that? Well, one of a pattern I sometimes like to play is shorting. Um, what I would call like a key technical breakdown. Uh, I thought we were going to get a pretty nice breakdown of below this like 580, 560 area um, right into this day and potentially fade back and test these lows of like 530, 520, and maybe even break this multi-month low um, in the fives and kind of maybe even fade down to like the fours and like a swing trade idea. Um, and I made money on this before at um, Humble. 
Um, actually, I'll talk about that after this trade. But, you know, so I've made money trading this. This is a strategy of mine or a setup of mine that I have made money in the past. Um, this one, however, ended up being a huge slap in the face. Um, and again, it's 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 nothing I can do or control. I would have to, I'll take this trade, you know, 10 times out of 10 every single time. However, this is just unfortunate because the next morning they put out news. Um, they put out news saying they like, they, again, these, this, this company was in, I believe, chapter 15 bankruptcy. Don't quote me on that. I would look it up to be sure. But again, it was, they were in bankruptcy going through it. Um, and they put out news saying they, I think they resolved a part of their bankruptcy, like one of their notes or their debt. Um, they figured out how they were going to handle it. And so again, that's for a company in bankruptcy. That's pretty good news. Um, so it gapped up. I mean, it gapped up literally like $2 a share on me. <laughs> so probably one of the biggest gaps it's had in its entire run up. Um, so it's really, really unfortunate, but again, this is part of the game. Like there's really nothing I can necessarily control there. Um, so when it was pretty shitty waking up to that, uh, I just covered it out the open. I tried trading a couple more times here and there, lost a little bit more and ended up losing like 13 grand on the trade. Um, biggest loser in quite some time, biggest loser on the month, as you can see here. Um, and after I took that loss, I pretty much stopped trading for the day. Uh, I didn't want to like revenge trade anything else. I didn't want to try to like, you know, quote unquote, make my money back. Um, so I just cut it right there. Um, coming to the next day, uh, it, I kept this, this, this great trade rolling. Um, so again, like I said, the news was good and they were figuring out their bankruptcy. It's held, it held its gains, especially above, you know, the mid eights level. Um, I started longing in the high eights, you know, 878, 80 area, added some more into this dip at the close for a long overnight, potentially to break over, you know, nine and 950 and potentially get a, a multi-day run going. And uh, that didn't happen. Uh, it gapped down. Um, I then sold my long right out the open, lost another 5K. Um, so again, another example of a stock that I thought should have gapped up and it gapped down. Um, so again, a huge market shift, many, many changes going on. Um, and then of course, you know, I was a day early because the next you know three days ends up having a great run up. Um, so again, very, very frustrating. Um, Luckily, I did make a lot of these gains back by shorting uh, HMBL. So again, the same play, the same exact pattern of shorting for a swing trade for a breakdown. I did do the same thing on Humble um, into this small breakdown below like the, the $3 range into the to panic into the 250 range. Um, if we go into the intraday, um, right, you can see it here. You can see clearly this is supporting the like 280 level. Um, a little bit higher in the high 280s here, but then 280 here, 280 here. Um, and so once we started kind of fading and breaking below this level here, I wanted to get short. Um, shorted, I believe, in the morning here. Added a little bit more into this bounce. Held it overnight. Right at the morning. Um, started panicking. I covered most into the 250s area. Um, but once we started making higher highs back into the 260s, 70s, like I wasn't going to start giving back gains. I covered the rest. Um... I believe I then tried to reshort a little bit into this huge, huge spike. Um, definitely made a lot, not a lot, made a little bit more onto the trade covering into this pull. Um, so again, ignoring this part of the trade, but again, it's the same pattern as LKNCY, just unfortunate LKNCY had news overnight. That's the risk I take with, with swing shorting some of these, or at least taking some shorts overnight. It happens, but I ended up making about 11K on this trade. Um, so most of my LKNC losses were covered by that, um, hence why I'm green on this day. Um, and again, going into the last day, it, TKAT was an NFT play. Um, part of the hot sector in the last couple of weeks was NFTs, a lot of NFT runners, a lot of stocks trying to tie themselves to the NFT sector, whether they are actually tied to the sector or not. Um, TKAT was one of them. Um, classic overextended gap down trade um, after running from, where was it, like sub 10 up to... Yeah, from five bucks up to 40, um, just a massive, massive run. And so going into this morning right here, uh, I think the close was, I believe my trades here. Yeah, here we are. Um, close was around 30 bucks. Um, got short a little bit pre-market, shorted some more out the open as we, we actually ended up opening red. Um, risking now the high like 31 areas here. We almost we almost broke it right there, but I held it at my risk. We actually pulled and halted down. I covered some into the halt down or into the reopen. Um, and then this is such a weird, and this is just where the market is changing. Things are different, um, different action is happening and it, it really can catch you off guard if you're so used to what we've been seeing in, in, 
in December, January, and February. Um, Hull to Down, I cover a little bit, but then, I mean, with really no pullback at all, I mean, it just goes from low a day to high a day. Um, very weird action. Um, I mean, yes, this has happened before on previous stocks. This isn't like the only time this has ever happened, but it's pretty rare. Um, so to see it happen, it was just pretty, pretty frustrating. Um, so I ended up did covering it all after it broke over these highs. Um, luckily, you know, covering here really reduced the loss. I only lost like 1500 bucks, which is a totally manageable loss for me. Um, which is frustrating, right? You know, really from, from the LKNCY to this, you know, I really could not really the HMBL short was the only big, big win for me. Um, everything else was a dud or ended up in a loss. So first red week in quite some time. Um, the great part about it is, is that yes, it was a red week, but it was such a small percentage, right? You know, yes, 9k is a lot. I mean, I'm not knocking, I'm not saying like, oh, I'm lost 9k. It's totally fine. But again, if you compare it to what I was making, if you compare it to percentage terms, right, this wasn't even like 1% of my account, um, or not one of my account of my total capital between all my accounts I'm trading with, this wasn't even 1%. Um, so if like, you know, if you can imagine my, my profit curve as like an S&P 500, it's like the S&P 500 for, for a full week only went down less than a percent. If you want to like view it that way, obviously I'm not the S&P 500, like it's, maybe it's a bad analogy, but remember the big, just think, the point is big picture. I was down very, very little. Um, but again, did it feel like that? No, it felt really crappy. Not necessarily again, because of the money, but because I just couldn't get anything going, right? Anything I tried, um, you know, the majority of what I tried just slapped me in the face. Uh, and that happens, you know, it's, it's part of the market. And like, and I, I certainly mentioned it last in last month's recap. I a hundred percent mentioned it in some of the twist episodes we've been making, you know, the market ebbs and flows when we go from quite literally the hottest market we've ever seen, that's going to be followed by probably one of the toughest markets we've ever seen. Now, I'm not saying this is the toughest market we've ever seen because there's plenty of traders still trading well, you know, but a lot of traders are struggling. I know not just me. I know a lot of traders that I've talked to, um, a lot of traders I follow on Twitter, like some traders just are not doing well. Um, and that's okay, right? They they all crushed it the last two or three months. Um, and now that the market has changed, right, this is usually what happens. Um, does it mean I can just stop trading? Yes, I could have just stopped trading. But at the same time, you know, I try to, I want to, practice adapting right I, i'm you know even though i was losing money here i'm glad i was here right there there's lessons to come from this there's you know it's good to see this trend um and not only that like i said throughout this whole period i told i was telling like it's going to change this isn't going to last this hot market will not last it will end um the same thing here right this market may be really really tough um but i promise you it will not last right we will come there will come another time where there are good opportunities where the markets that we know how to trade well will come back um, so again, it's, it's constantly flipping back and forth between knowing that each market you're in will not last. It's about adapting to the current one you're in and being prepared for the next one, the next adaptation to happen. Um, whether that means losing small like this, only being such a small percentage, or actually being one step ahead and actually starting to profit right right on the fly, right, like adapting right away. Um, so yeah, going into week four. Um, pretty much could have taken this week off. <laughs> As you can see, really, again, couldn't get anything going. Um, I will say the, the gift and the curse of trading is that when stuff is really hot, when you're in a very hot market that you can trade very well, it seems like you just get lucky, right? It just, it seems like, you know, so many factors go in your favor, you know, this day being an example where I was trading so poorly in the morning and then got bailed out by such a great opportunity come midday. Um, it also flips on its head where, I think once the market really gets really, really shitty and you can't trade well, it gets even more shitty with like bad luck. Um, LKNCY again, being one of them, right? I just, it ha news happened. I couldn't do anything about that. Um, same thing here is that I actually went on vacation over the weekend and on the 23rd and 22nd with my family. Um, again, this is again, this is part of something I really can't control. So it's not boohoo poor me, but it's something I want to just acknowledge about how like I just said, how the market can be really be really lucky for you in good times, or it can be really unlucky for you in bad times. So couldn't get anything going on these days, right? Pretty much could have taken these days off because it really led me to nowhere. Um, unfortunately, on the 22nd, the day I took off, um, we had AABB, which was an awesome, awesome first red day right here. Um, and if I had been around, I 100% would have been all over this because I was watching. Let me just delete my emails. I don't know why this is open here. Sorry. 
um, I've been watching this stock for first red day. Um, I believe I lost like a few hundred on this day prior to it, trying to short for a red day, trying to see if it can go red. Um, ended up holding, going higher. But come this day, I mean, seeing this panic, I mean, even if I missed the short, this dip by here led to a great bounce. Um, so, you know, there's no telling how well I would have traded or how much what I would have made, but this was by far the best opportunity of the week to, to potentially pull out a nice profit. Um, and if I traded even moderately well, I mean, that could have been my whole week where right? I could have made two, three, four, five, maybe 10, if I traded it perfectly. And that could have been my week, you know, um, again, I'm taking out, I'm not, I don't regret going on vacation with my family, but again, it's just one of those factors of like when the market's tough, um, there might be some obstacles that make it even tougher. And when the market's great, there might be even less obstacles to make it even better. Um, so that's just one of those examples. Um, going to the week five, again, nothing really eventful. Um, the only great, great play for me, which was the end of the day or the last day of the month, was EENFF, um, OTC Runner, fairly new IPO, or not IPO, but it's just started trading recently. Um, and going into this day on the 30th, I thought to myself, you know, this thing's up trending. Um, at some point, we're going to get like a little bit of a speed up. And so I did along overnight into the close um, right here. Um, I like the fact that it dipped and held view up. You can't see view up here, but it, it did hold view up here and then actually came right back and then closed sideways, letting me know that, you know, yeah, some people sold out, but a lot more buyers want in. Um, so I did buy like literally the last 30 seconds into the close and we were gifted with a massive gap up. Um, pretty much, I believe it gapped up right up to six cents. So a whole penny and a half to share. Um, huge, huge gap. I think it's like a 40% gap. I immediately sold right at six cents. Um, right up the open, you know, you can't really ask for something better than that. Um, end up locking in a um, little over 7K, uh, or I guess a little bit under 8K there. Um, so just great, great win. Uh, didn't touch it the rest of the day. Probably should have maybe been a little more aggressive considering how strong it was um, to ride some of this run-up, but I didn't. Um, and then going into April, um, I did take a loss on it. I tried to be a little aggressive taking it along overnight again. I thought, okay, if it's so strong today, like let's see if it can gap up again. Fortunately, it didn't, so I did sell for like a, a 2K loss. Um, no big deal. Again, just starting off April on a small note, small loss note. But again, we got a whole rest of the month ahead. Um, we will see how I continue to adapt. Um, if it's any the same as it was these three last three weeks, it's gonna be it's gonna be tougher. Like I'm not gonna deny that. Um, but again, experiencing these next weeks, I think will better prepare me for this. Um, and again, no, even no matter how slow a market we're in, I do always generally find that we are offered at least one, two, three good opportunities a month, even in the slowest of months. And so I think the key is being there for them and really pushing it when it's there. You know, I rather I rather trade five times through the month and make a hundred grand than trade fifty times and just pull out like ten k. You know what I mean? Like it, when it's slower months, it tr comes down to kind of a, an efficiency standpoint of like really take advantage of when the market's there, whether that being only one opportunity for the month, instead of like trying to force, you know, every little thing you see that really isn't worth taking and it just drains your energy, drains your capital um, and almost kind of hurts you to be prepared for when like those few great, great setups are show up. You know, I rather really just stay patient, stay focused, really have a bunch of energy and and, um, and patience and focus for when those great trades set up, then wasting all of that on setups that just aren't really worth it. Um, so that's going to be the approach I want to take into April. We will see what happens. Um, again, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will, uh, I'll catch you guys later.